Um, I've been working on Chris's house, building his house, and of course I have a link down to that where we're building his house that's mostly off-grid because he, does, he will be using propane to heat. But in the mornings before I go over there when it's too cold to do anything, and in the evenings when we're done for the day, I've been doing some experimenting and I've been doing some uh, Demotics software and it's spelled D-O-M-O-T-I-C-Z. And this stuff is really awesome. Wemo switches and then these eco plugs which are very similar to them to be able to remotely turn things on and off around the house and it's been really nice but the thing is they burn up an IP address and my ISP doesn't like doing all these address translations to go across the internet well then I found Insteon and what I really like about these is whenever I'm uh, doing some uh, lighting around the house. I started out using these at the church and using it to control the LED lighting there. And what I really like about it is it gives the lighting a very organic feel because LEDs are instantly on and instantly off. Well, these you can give them a ramp up and a ramp down when they turn on or off. I really like that because it just gives it a nice warmer feel whenever you turn your lights on and off. So, um, the only issue that I have with these is these guys are like anywhere from 30 to $50, depending on which ones you get. I've got a switch around here that I had been using to turn on and off my heat pump. And I've gone to these. Well, as opposed to 30 to $50 for one of these guys, if you get one that's just an on off relay, they're like 50 bucks a dimmer is like 30 but it'll only handle like 600 watts these guys will handle 1200 watts and uh they're wi-fi switches so they're more closely related to the wemo and alexa sees these as a wemo when you flash them with tasmoda software or firmware these guys are only five dollars and what i love about this thing is not only will it switch a load on and off, um, it will take, and if you add sensors to it, you have to go into the board and solder them on, and I've been doing some of that messing around, but you can measure temperature, you can detect motion, like through PIR, uh, analog to digital conversion, so a whole world of things has been opened up to us, and I'm gonna share with you what I've been doing that I think is really going to revolutionize a lot of the way that we do things. Because um, the software that I wrote ran on a Windows computer. Now using Demotics, I run that on a Raspberry Pi and that uses between 5 and 10 watts. And I'm able to control everything with it. This switch, with my watt hour meter, my kilowatt meter, it doesn't even register as using anything. But they're rated at a half a watt, I believe. So the computer used to pull uh, about 150 watts for the desktop. I went down to a de uh, laptop. That would pull around 28, 30 watts. Now I've gone to five, well, about seven watts on average. And then I can control these at a half a watt each. And I'm using one of these that's the low or safe version voltage, as they call it. And I'm using one of these to... Uh, or I'm going to try to use it to monitor my voltage and my amperage, both on consumption and production. So first what I want to do is uh, I'm going to start up this live screen capture thingy here. And uh, all right, now it says it's screen capturing. So we'll switch over to the screen here, and I'm going to show this to you. Um, right now what I'm controlling is the coffee pot, my wood stove circulator, 
I've got one motion sensor that I'm using, the heat pump. Uh, we have a table lamp, a light out at the goat barn, night light. And then I've got some sensors. I've got a sensor on the water heater and I've got a sensor on the wood stove temperature for the water that's coming out of that. Now what I really like about this is I'm already using this so that what I used to do whenever I'd build a fire, I would go to the wood stove and I would flip a switch that would start the water circulating through the wood stove when I'd build a fire and that would heat the water up in the water heater. Now the bad thing is if I forgot to turn it off, uh, it would continue circulating through the wood stove after the fire goes out and then that would cool the water temperature down in the water heater once the wood stove cooled off. So if I forgot to turn the water circulator pump on and I build a fire, we'd have a steam explosion. And in a previous episode, you saw the results of that. Well, what I've done now is you can see that right now this wood stove circulator pump is on. The wood stove temperature and the water heater temperature are the same. But if this wood stove temperature drops below the temperature of the water heater, then it'll turn this wood stove circulator off. As soon as the uh, temperature of the water going through the wood stove is the same or greater than the, wa the water temperature in the water heater, it'll turn this circulator on. And this has been working absolutely fantastic because I get up in the mornings and we've still got hot water in the wood stove, or I mean hot water in the water heater and so the wife can wash dishes or you know we can a lot of times even still take a shower so uh, I don't have to worry about staying up till midnight to turn the water circulator off to preserve the hot water we have in the water heater and to also not risk having a steam explosion because the heat inside the fireplace builds up. This handles everything automatically so this by itself has really been a lifesaver to us in terms of water heating. Now we're going to talk a little bit about this circuit that I've been working on and I'm going to share that with you. I'm really really excited about this. Okay this is my project that I'm building. I've got the voltmeter which is checking my reference voltage that would be coming from the batteries. This is the Sonoff SV and I've got that running through these two little wires to this analog to digital converter. It's an ADS1115. It's pretty common. It converts uh, voltage readings to uh, digital signals that this can understand. And then I've got a little adjustment potentiometer here that I use as a voltage divider that brings this reference voltage of 3.65 volts that's what I have to divide the voltage down to be an equivalent of 51.17 that I, I get a printout on my computer here so I'm going to take this circuit out to my battery room and hook it up out there uh, this little circuit board over here is just a buck voltage regulator It'll take up to 72 volts and step it down to 5 volts for my logic circuitry. And that's how I run all that stuff. So I'm going to take it out to the shed where the batteries and the inverter and charge controller are. And this is a four channel analog to digital converter. So I'm using one channel now. And I plan to use the other two channels to read the amperage of how much electricity I'm producing and another one for how much I'm consuming and then I can do the difference of those to get my net amperage that's coming in. This is going to open up a whole new world of possibilities. I'm using the Demotic software and uh, the voltage here. If this works the way that I'm hoping it will and the way that it should work this is going to absolutely revolutionize the whole way that we manage our electrical production and electrical consumption. And I'm really excited about this. Okay, I 
apologize for the mess in here, but again, I'm a big tinkerer and experimenter. But uh, you can see here that my voltage is 58.4. My reference voltage is 4.15. And there's my little converter that's converting from 58.4 volts down to 5 volts for the circuit that drives the Sonoff and the analog to digital converter there. And then, of course, the voltage divider I've got coming straight off the batteries. The supply for these guys here, you can see that red clip goes over to the positive on my inverter and then the black. Yes, I don't have a fuse here because my fuse is this circuit. It'll just burn up the wires and the circuits. Um, but anyway, there's my reference voltage. I'm going to go back in the house now and we will look at demotics and see if it's properly registering the voltage. Right now we're at 58.3 so we'll go have a look at that. This here is my Alfred camera and I was using Alfred through this little Android so that I could look at the voltage and see what my voltage was anywhere even off my own phone but now I'm hoping that all of this will allow me to not only see my voltage from anywhere but allow some more automation to take place as a result. Okay, I got my test circuit installed in the battery shed. It's calibrated and I've come back into the house. So I've got my voltmeter for my charge controller up on Alfred and then I've got Demotics over on this side. So let's switch over to this. I'm gonna get my uh, Lime screen capture and get it started so you guys can see better on the screen what it looks like. So you can see here that uh, on the charge controller I've got 58.4 volts. Battery voltage over here says 58.723. Now linearity when you've got digital devices it's not perfectly linear on any device so you're going to have some deviation between these devices. And I'm going to say that mine is probably less accurate than what the Schneider charge controller says. But for the purposes of building decisions and allowing a computer to turn on and off loads based on the voltage, I'm there. Because you can see here, 58.4, 58.422. It's good. I've got uh, the water heater is 125. The wood stove is 83. Uh, it's 23 and a half degrees outside. All this information that I've got coming into Demotics, I can use to make decisions off of. I'm also going to put uh, some photoresistors out there, so or a photoresistor, so I can tell just exactly how sunny it is, and I can make decisions based on that. Um, I'm able to see the voltage. As soon as I get my uh, amperage transducer in, I'll be able to measure amperage on my system. It's just, uh, and it's non-invasive. It doesn't run through a shunt. It's just uh, a round, um, well, I forget what you call it. It's a toroid type of thing that the cable runs through a hole and it has a coil around that and it measures the amperage that's going through that cable. So I'll be able to put one going to the inverter and one coming from the charge controller and I'll be able to see how much I'm generating as opposed to how much I'm consuming. And the difference of that would be what's either going into the batteries or coming out of the batteries. I'll be able to have the computer make decisions based on that. Now the server that runs the Domotic software is on this computer. This is a Raspberry Pi. You can buy these off of eBay for about $35, $40. And um, this is the thing I was telling you about that uses about 7 watts on average for what I use it for. And it runs three servers on it. It runs one that's called Domotics, which is that server. 
Then it runs an MQTT server uh, called me Mosquito. But this stuff you might want to Google if you're really technically interested in it. And then another server that's called Node-RED that allows you to uh, bring in information from any of those sensors and put it out to anything else. So it's kind of like a patch cord type of thing where you can patch one thing to another. I am really, really fired up about this. This is going to change everything, y'all. I'm free and it feels